First thing is we're gonna ask um, our speakers to uh, introduce themselves. So we're gonna start with Nick and we're gonna go straight down. So if you could just tell us your name, the company you work with, and uh, maybe one or two interesting uh, facts that you never thought you'd tell a room of uh, 150 people. Oh wow. So my name is Clifton Chidu. I'm actually the technical recruiter lead at Foursquare. I handle all the technical recruitment from interns all the way to the director level candidates. I've been there for about three months. Before then, I was spent about two years over at Compass, which was a technical real estate startup. Um, I did a little bit of business development, engineering recruitment over there. And a fun fact about me, I've been to Vegas every year since like 2008. <laughs> so let's see from the long list of questions. Um, so the questions that we sent you, I threw them out and I created new ones just to, just to <laughs> warn you. So um, I guess the first one would be, you know, if, if we think about um, you know, the room tonight, and um, the candidate flow that we're seeing today at, at Crowded is, and there's some different definitions, so we're gonna start there. So we would, we would label the majority of the developers in the room, and what we see is, is really junior to intermediate developers. So I'm gonna ask from Nick, and we're gonna go straight the way down, just real quick, you know, one sentence or so, you know, what would you consider to be a junior developer as far as, you know, the, the number of years, years of experience, or if there's another metric for just the term junior developer, because I think as an industry, we're having some issues um, with the label, and it's affecting the way that candidates sometimes are applying for uh, for jobs. I would probably say around like zero to two years, or someone who's used to only working on very, I guess, like specific features, with like one or two features of a specific part of the code base. Because sometimes you have people who've only been working one year, but if they work at like a startup where they were exposed to like multiple features of the product, they might be considered more mid-level. But generally, I say zero to two years at someone who's used to only working on like one or two very specific duties. If you think about you know the skill sets of, we're not going to go too far into the future. Maybe in the next you know twelve to eighteen months, um, you know, what what type of skills you're looking for for again you know more of that junior developer position? Is it you know, a certain framework you know um, or you know something that that you know, you would suggest, you know, maybe some, some candidates here are watching, you know, kind of live tonight or, or the replays that they should really focus on um, becoming experts in that's going to help them over the next 12 to 18 months. All right, cool. Um, yeah, actually, two things I've noticed a lot of, like, I guess, like how analytics was like five years ago, how big data Hadoop was like three years ago. I'll probably say more of machine learning, artificial intelligence. Um, there's a lot of free courses like Team Treehouse, Coursera, mm -hmm. or even the MIT side. Um, been noticing like a lot, like even when you at least read like job descriptions, it's always preferred to have knowledge of like just general concepts of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So I think that's definitely going to be like the next big trend like for this year and next year, especially with personalized recommendations and predictive technology. So that would probably be what I would expect probably in the next year or two. So real quick, um, love to hear a story of someone that, that you hired that you felt really comfortable with that in the first 90 days or 120 days, you or your t or the team realized just wasn't going to work out, and maybe it was you know, it was the a disconnect as an example, like a reason that something didn't work out that felt great on the intake. No, of course. So this actually hasn't happened when I've been an internal recruiter. It happened when so basically before Compass, I used to be an agency recruiter. So we work with some financial clients. Um, so this happened. I think it was a contractor for a large financial firm. Basically, when they interviewed the person, they were like, yeah, this guy is excellent. Basically, we extended him the offer. Then, one month into it, we got an email saying, hey, we need to talk. Can we conference in with your account manager, account director? So we went into the call. We were like, this is really odd, because normally they would always ask all the agencies to be in the same conference call. So then we got on to it. Then they were like, yeah, unfortunately, like what we discussed in the actual interview versus how this particular contract is performing is just two different ways, so we're going to have to let them go. And what made this a little bit more difficult was this candidate relocated from Florida to North Carolina. Mm. So I'm like, oh, okay, so this guy broke his lease from Florida to move to North Carolina, and one month in, we have to terminate him. So unfortunately, that was a very difficult call, because I was, this was part of my second month of recruitment at all. I just finished graduating from undergrad, so I'm like, this is going to be a really difficult call. But basically, I was, I was honest with the candidate, basically just letting them know that, you know, with, how they want this role to grow and his experience, it would just be beneficial to essentially to terminate the contract. So, Cliff, um, we've talked a little bit about, you know, cultural fit on, on you know, maybe you know, why things may have not worked out. I think that's come up a few times um, tonight um, in that conversation. So, you know, what's your thought when, because, you know, just to, to go back for, you know, for when I started doing this in the video game industry, no one ever talked about culture. 
20 years ago. We literally had a developer, and I'm not joking, who wore a beanie with a propeller on his head. And I'm not joking, he actually sat there in his office and he used to wear that. And, yeah. and it's just, and, and I haven't seen another one of those in 20 years, thank God. But like, they didn't go out together and no one went to escape the room together and no one had team building and trust falls. It's like everyone coded all night and they occasionally showered and, and like that was it. So, you know, to me, it's fascinating how, you know, technology is, is turned into, you know, this the importance of cultural fit that I never would have bet on, you know, 20 something years ago. So I'd love to hear your, your feedback on, on like why it's important and does it really matter or is it just companies speak on like we love everyone and our employee engagement is wonderful? No, I actually think Cultivate is definitely a great selling point, especially when you go in because the pool for not only technical talent, but just great talent in general is very competitive. So, you know, when you have hedge funds, banks, everyone going out to the same pool of people, I think culture is always a great selling point. Yeah, you may be in a financial firm, but if you walk in like 120 hours weeks, not really the best quality of life. Whereas with a startup, and I'm a little bit biased to startups, of course, I think the standard and just culture of all, like, isn't an inclusive culture. Um, one thing, though, I do hate the term culture fit have used a lot. The way I usually judge people when I'm like screening candidates, I'm not necessarily looking for culture fit. I look for more of culture ad, like can this person add to the culture of Foursquare? Because whenever I hear culture fit, it's kind of like you already have a predetermined box. Does someone fit in that box? Yes or no? And I think that's a little bit not, I don't want to say discriminatory, I think that's kind of like one-track mind. Whereas mm -hmm. with, you, with new people, you want to add to the culture of the organization. So I look for not only to make sure that this person will like, you know, basically be a good fit for Foursquare, but will this person add to the overall culture at Foursquare? Tell us in the most condensed way that you can about you know, the hiring process for a developer at your company. Is there you know, a coding challenge, is, you know, technical interviews? Just I, I know it could be, a, especially on the Google side, it could probably be a very long conversation. So we'll do you know, the super condensed version of it and we'll run right down the path. So it usually starts off with a pre-screen with myself, just kind of basic information gathering. Um, then I send a code and exercise where the candidate completes it. And uh, once they complete it, we basically anonymize the person's code. So basically the our grader from our engineering team, they don't know if this person's a CMU grad, non-CMU, male, female. We completely keep it so they don't know exactly. All they can read is the code. Um, if they are yes to it, we just basically bring this person on site. There's basically a four hour interview with a one hour lunch and then that's the entire process. Interesting, so you're basically trying to remove bias from that, from exactly. that review. That's really interesting.